Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alberta News and Views, the best podcast in the prairies with the best newsletter in the prairies. You can follow me on Substack and Spotify. It is built by the people for the people, regular people, just like you and I. Check out this amazing post from the legendary Larry Brock. He says, No money recovered. Current board director of Trudeau's Green Slush Fund confirms zero dollars of taxpayer money has been recovered. The chair was found guilty of breaking ethics laws. $330 million paid out in 186 conflicts. $330 million. Literally billions and billions of taxpayer dollars under this liberal NDP government have just evaporated. It is astounding. The money is still flowing. When will Canadians get their money back? Check this out and don't have a heart attack. I want you to address Canadians because there are hundreds of thousands of Canadians who are following the scandal, following my social media posts, my colleagues' social media posts about this scandal. What are you saying to Canadians about your priority in terms of ensuring money is paid back. What is the plan? The plan is to implement the findings of the Auditor General's report of June 2024, and we are well advanced in that work. And and that every recommendation has been implemented now except one, and that is we are now reviewing every single project on an individual basis, as per her recommendation. And where are there com- is any... Are you completely disregarding the findings of the Ethics Commissioner who made a finding of two violations under the Conflict of Interest Act with a defined amount? Why is it not a priority for your board working with the ministry to recover those funds from Annette Versheeren? Why aren't you doing that? We are we are in a process right now. It's incredible. Doesn't say anything. Process yeah. is is government speak for take our word for it. We are going to make this a priority when we get to it. You've had four months to do something about it. This is a priority for Canadians. It's not a priority to continue the funding. The priority is to get the money back, almost a billion dollars of taxpayer funds that is, that's just not being recovered. No process to recover that. That's a real significant problem. I want The silence is deafening, and it just speaks volumes of just the accountability of, of our government in Canada. There's none. Zero accountability for a terrible job. In the real world, we would get fired or demoted. Why is it that politicians can break laws and steal and nothing happens to them? I always thought that politicians should, every year, should get audited. If there's any ethics violations, anything, they lose their pension, they get fired. They should be getting paid based off of efficiency and what they are doing for their constituents or just the Canadian population, depending on what what department they're at and how they got elected. This needs to stop. There is no justice or accountability in in government. And because of it, because of the lack of all of it, they're going to keep on being corrupt. They're going to keep on stealing and doing whatever they want. They figured out that they can get caught and nothing happens. They just bury it create new departments to bury it or just create new laws. So they didn't break any old laws. It's ridiculous, man. I, I just love, I love Larry Brock. Love watching the guy continuing on. Here's an article. It, it, it'll just blow your mind from the financial post. This is from uh, today. Mark Carney warns net zero will mean significant stranded property assets. Well, what does that mean? Listen to this. Real estate investors squeeze between falling valuations and pressure to upgrade energy efficiency. So it's like property managers have old buildings. 
So they're going to be forced to make them greener, retrofit them, upfit them, and make them more efficient up to whatever the standards are of the current government in the country. And if they don't, they won't get funding anymore and they will just bulldoze the buildings, the older buildings, or they will be stranded, abandoned, and there will be these corpses laying <laughs> these buildings empty everywhere. And we see them already in a lot of huge, massive metropolitan cities that used to be nice, like Chicago, Philly, Detroit, you name it. Um, downtown Calgary, honestly, the vacancy rate is unbelievable because of a bazillion other reasons. Continuing on. Former central banker Carbon Tax Carney has warned there will be significant stranded assets in commercial real estate as governments push to reach net zero, highlighting the risk to property owners and lenders from older buildings that cannot adapt. Property investors are facing a double whammy from the sharp fall in asset values caused by higher interest rates and increasingly urgent demands to invest in energy efficiency. Wait till I'm just going to skip to the very end of this and it is going to blow your mind. So stranded assets are often associated with fossil fuels that will be phased out through the green transition. But Carney underscored that there are also older buildings that aren't going to make it as countries regulate to cut greenhouse gas emissions across all sectors. There will be a tale of stranded assets. This is a quote, by the way, which are going to have to turn over and be refurbished if possible or knocked down and repurposed, he said. Listen to this right here. Dutch Bank ING last month warned 2,000 of its biggest clients, including commercial real estate developers and owners, that it would stop providing them with financing if they failed to make sufficient progress on tackling their climate impacts. That is a social credit system, a social credit score, whatever you want to call it. It's punishing people because they're not doing what they are told. It found that commercial real estate was a laggard compared with other sectors when it came to disclosing climate impacts. This right here is another conspiracy theory proven um, correct. Once again, it starts with this. It will trickle down to each and every individual. We will all have a carbon footprint and it will be based off of a social credit system. The framework is already there. But despite climate risks for the sector, Carney said he was not concerned about risks to financial stability from the property sector. Quote, I am very sanguine about commercial real estate risks in the financial sector as a whole. Because the risk is more broadly spread, there is less liquidity pressures than would have come in a bank-based commercial real estate sector, he said. And I think that the workout process is proceeding for those assets that need to be worked out. Don't ever forget that Mark Carney is advising Justin Trudeau on how to save his party and how to move forward because they are completely lost, broke, and broken. Nobody asked for this. Nobody voted for this. And yet they seem to think that they are just going to ram it through because it is the banks. They control. Remember the saying, you control the money, you control the government. It's all you need to know. I'm going to finish this off with, um, man, think of the carbon tax. Think of the carbon tax in Canada. The Trudeau, the, the liberal NDP government and Stephen Gibo. Think about them when you listen to this video about Donald Trump talking about energy. So this is from Vigilant Fox. Donald Trump wows Dave Ramsey when he tells him that he is going to slash energy costs by 50% in less than a year. Quote, that's pretty good. It's going to happen fast, Trump says. Most people don't realize, as Ramsey pointed out, that 10 to 15% of the entire economy is energy, and it weaves its tentacles through everything else. This is why it's so crucial to get the price of energy down. Watch as Trump reveals how he's going to do it. We know this in Canada with our carbon tax. When you tax, when you tax the food, uh, the transportation of the food, it reaches the shelves. It is just a chain reaction of cost that gets dumped on 
us, the middle class, everybody. It is in everything. Listen to this. I don't know if people realize that you know, 10 to 15% of the entire economy is energy, right. and it weaves its tentacles through everything else. So $5 gas it, affects, it affects the bread truck who's yeah. delivering the bread, yeah. and that affects the cost of the bread then. And so yeah, getting that plentiful right. changes everything. So I have a little thing that I've been saying lately because I think it's easily achievable. You know, we pay very high energy costs, and especially now, but we're paying very, very high I believe I'll be able to get energy down to 50%, 50, 50 percent of what it is right now within a period of less than a year. Wow. That's pretty good. It's going to happen fast, okay? It's going to happen fast. Well, what are you going to do to do that? What causes that? They're going to drill. They're going to, they're going to frack. They're going to do things that they, they have tremendous so addition. So taking the regs off. Taking the regulations yeah, off. Yeah, we, oh, we have to. They put them back on. They put regulations back on. That areas that have no environmental real meaning, they don't let them drill. They, they're taking leases away, government leases that you're hearing about. I think we can get energy costs down to half of what they... If we do that... That's pretty dramatic. If, if everything, all of those inflated prices are going to come down with it. It's going to be crazy, crazy if Donald Trump gets elected. No taxes on tips, no taxes on overtime, drill, baby, drill. At the same time, when World War III is getting teed up, imagine oil gets to around $120, $150 a barrel again. And Donald Trump is elected, and he unleashes that energy at this, right before Pierre Polyev gets in. It's going to be crazy. Crazy. The economy uh, down south and in Canada, if Pierre Polyev gets elected and can actually undo the last nine years of economic damage from Justin Trudeau. It's, it's just an amazing, an amazing time right now to be alive. Absolutely chaotic. I'm going to keep you updated with as much as I can when I can. All of you out there, like, share, and take care.